Uriah, what are you doing? I'm treadmilling. Treadmilling? <laughs> this is work day. Engine work day, not work out day. <laughs> What is up guys? Welcome back to the FFR shop. We have finally made it to the point to where it is engine building time. I've got my buddy Paul over there. He has driven down from uh, up north to give me a hand on my engine build because let me just tell you guys right off the bat, I'm gonna be 100% honest and 100% transparent in this video. I am nervous as I'll get out to do this by myself. So Paul is the one that helped me on my roll cage for the 13 car if you've been watching for any length of time or if you've watched that build series you've seen him he welded my car in when i didn't really know how to weld and so he has offered uh to give me a hand on putting this engine back together because i want to make sure i do it right and again i am a nervous wreck to do this wrong and mess this up because if you guys know leading up to any kind of uh to this point leading up to this point i have just poured my heart and soul into this car and for me to get to this point and mess up this engine build would be just disastrous to me. I, it would just hurt my feelings a lot when I went to try to do something and it wasn't right. So I've been talking with Paul. I've also got to shout out a bunch of YouTubers and a bunch of my friends. Ryan Trezian has just been outstanding when it comes to this stuff. All of my parts that you're going to see that I've ordered, I have everything on the, the table over there to get this engine put together, I hope. Ryan has just been a plethora of knowledge when it comes to what to order, what I need to grab, stuff like that. Paul, which you're going to see him help me a little bit. I've already mentioned that. He has helped me phenomenally just to get the right parts. Matthew Trevenbach at Trevenbach Racing. I've been watching his stuff. And of course, Mr. Steve Edens. They've just been phenomenal. So I have to shout out them guys. Also Outfits Garage. They're all working on their channels, building engines, doing race car stuff. And I've learned a ton from their channels. So thank you guys if you are watching. I really appreciate it. But the game plan for today is to get this engine as far built or assembled as possible. We may find some hiccups. I may not have bought the right stuff. Hopefully that's not the case. But we're going to see how far we can get and uh, at least try to get one step closer to getting this engine busted off and getting some power rumbling in this shop again since it's not been doing anything with this car at all <laughs> since I destroyed that other motor. And a little bit update on that other motor. That other motor is scarred really bad. I brought it up, traded Mr. David for this engine. That block ended up being no good. And so it's really unfortunate because I thought that block was still good and it turns out it wasn't. So we're going to work something out with Mr. David as well. So... Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Let's get to building an engine. So first things first is we went over our parts list. Um, we went over and made sure that I had everything, which we found out that I needed new uh, head valve cover gaskets. The ones I have will work, but they were originally for, what'd you say, double humps or something? No, just a Gen 1. Gen a Gen 1, 1. okay, so um, I gotta get, we're gonna get the right ones for Vortec heads just so that we make sure we have a good fit on the uh, valve covers. Uh, the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna cut into this engine and get this plastic out. And you said we're just gonna surface the heads, clean them up with some brake clean, scuff them up, and then we're gonna install our studs. So I told you guys I bought some studs. Ryan Trezian has these on his uh, channel. And so we're gonna get some, uh, what is that, ultra gray, and lube these up and get them put in the, the engine block.
Okay, so we have the head studs in. We have all the Permatex cleaned off, and we've set the valve or the uh, head gaskets on. So I've got to give a huge shout out to Baker's Engine and Machine, Baker's Machine Shop in Moss Point, Mississippi. I haven't showed you guys yet, but here are my heads. He did what are they? He did the springs. Um, he did. He painted them and surfaced the heads and did a valve job, right? So. They should be good to go. Vortec heads are about to go on this engine. So again, if you guys are in the area, Main Street, Moss Point, Mississippi, Baker's Machine Shop did them heads for me. Shannon Jackson, you are the man if you're watching this, so I really appreciate it. So now it's time to set them on there. Okay, so the heads are on. It's a done deal. We got everything torqued. We went around it the first pass, second pass, third pass, and then we double checked everything. So as far as the heads being bolted onto the engine block, that is complete. Now Paul's over here getting ready to uh, get the lifters soaking in some oil. I dropped the ball and forgot to do that. So he's gonna get that going. What are these called again? I just call them the little pivots for your rocker rocker, arms. rocker pivot. So I didn't buy them, but I ended up having these off them old heads, so I took them off. So I'm not sure what the technical name is. Don't know what the one. technical name is, but we got them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good enough. So now we're gonna get to soaking these lifters and get start getting them put in, and then we'll start putting the uh, rocker arms on to try to see if we can figure out what our um, push rod length is, right? That's something we can do today, so. Yeah. Here we go, one more step closer. So bottom end looks amazing. You guys just saw that. I just got the um, motor mounts wire wheeled and painted. They're out there drying. We are going to go ahead and replace the uh, Felpro's one Felpro one piece blue uh, 
oil pan gasket. What we're doing is we've got this racing oil pan right here. It's got a lot more capacity for oil than that stock one that was on it. So we just checked the, the main bearings, right, Paul? And rockers, not rockers, uh, rod bearings. And just double checked everything since we had everything off. Everything looks amazing. Mr. David has done an incredible job on this engine. Has a brand new oil pump. So really blessed, very thankful for Mr. David for uh, hooking me up with this. So we've ordered intake gaskets, valve cover gaskets because I had the wrong ones because I went to Vortec heads. So that should be in in the next hour or so. So we're gonna go get that stuff, come back and try to assemble the bottom or the oil pan back on, get the brand new gasket on, flip it over. By that time, the motor mounts will be dried up. We're going to then be able to put the lifters in and once the lifters are in, we can kind of set the intake down, get the intake done, check push rod length, stuff like that. So good stuff. That's what I can say. And so we'll be right back. We're going to run to advance, get this stuff, and then uh, we'll try to get going and keep on going. And Paul even said there's a possibility we may even try to put it back in the, the car today. So that would be very cool because then I can start putting all the accessories back on. Good stuff. All right, guys, before we head to the parts house i want to say a big thank you to solix they are our video sponsor for today they offer an awesome product this is a 200 watt car inverter they are an awesome company that provides different types of inverters this is the 200 watt they have a bunch of different options but you guys know i'm constantly on the road constantly needing to edit videos and have power for computers, GoPros, phones like that. So this cool little device right here is plugged into my cigarette lighter in my truck and Paul is charging his phone and at the same time I am charging my computer. And so it is a very handy thing to have, especially if you're a racer, uh, you can get them on Amazon. I'm gonna include that link, but I want to thank Solix for sending us this. If you guys would like to pick you one up, it's very cool. It's got four or three USBs, and then it's got a Type C charger on the uh, side of it, and then two 110 outlet plugs. And so that's the cool part is while you're in the truck, normally you don't have 110 plugs. Now you do. You're able to convert 12 volt to 110 and be able to plug anything in. So for me, it's very beneficial because I can charge my laptop while I'm driving down the road and it does not uh, take up a lot of space. You can just slide it right in your cup holder. So again, you guys check it out. Slawix, very cool, on off button. Got your different type of chargers there and very functional. So you have a bunch of different options. So a thank you to Solix for sending us this. You guys check them out in the description below. Let's get back to the shop and get some uh, motor work done. Set it on there lightly and then let's get our bolts lined up. Let's 
Thank you again to CJ Lee for this intake. Appreciate that a lot. I had the wrong intake because I didn't have more tech cats. So you hooked me up. Oh, yeah. Nice one, intake. Cleaned up good. Cleaned up really good. Very good chance. Alrighty, so we've got the heads on. The push rods ended up being perfect length from my old motor. I just had to rob one new push rod. So the length was perfect. We've got all of the push rods on. I just have to get the nuts put on. But Paul's headed out. So Paul, you do not know how much I appreciate you. Paul has been just clutch for me today. We learned a lot. I got everything pretty much done on this thing. I can set the valve covers on once I get these nuts on and close up this thing and it will be weatherproof, which is awesome. I'm to the point now to where I can start putting stuff together and get it back in the car. And so what I may do is I'm not gonna wrap this video up just yet, but I'm gonna wait for dad to get home and it may even be tomorrow after work and I'm going to see if I can get this thing to the point enough to where we can mate it back up with the transmission and get it stabbed in the car. So I'm going to get to work, and the next time I come back, hopefully I'll have this thing good enough to where we can put it back in the car. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Dear Lord, Paul is gone. I'm out here alone, and I just have one small, simple prayer. Please let this run. <laughs> Just let it run. <laughs> All right, guys. So I am back out here. Um, it's been a couple of days, and there's a reason, really good reason why. So here's what went down. Paul left the other day. I uh, came back out here. Decided I was going to go ahead and set all the valve lash and all that jazz watching a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do that. And long story short, I realized that I had the uh, studs. These are not the push-in studs. They're the screw-in studs for the um, rocker arms. They were all loose. They were literally just hand tight. And I had already run the nuts down in there. And as I was running the nuts down in there, they were turning, nothing was going right. As I was loosening them back up, I pulled them all out of the head. It was just, it was a, it was a disaster. So anyways, I took them all out, ordered brand new studs, got them, uh, got the right tap and retapped all of the threads, got brand new studs, also ordered the little roller uh, ball looking bearing things that go down in the rockers and then ordered new uh, lock nuts for the top. So got all that done, uh, ended up trying to set the valve lash again, and my buddy Paul Gamble sent me an awesome video with Vice Grip Garage explaining how to do that. So got to that point, got everything done, and then Mr. Steve Edens at SWE sent me the right valve covers for Vortec heads, the center bolt ones, and these are were too short so couldn't put the valve covers on then realized that they sent me the wrong valve cover gasket so it was just like a domino effect i didn't have one thing so i couldn't do one or the other and vice versa long story short ordered brand new valve covers got the right valve cover gaskets got everything set everything's done so got to the point where I was like, all right, I'm ready to put the uh, transmission back on. And then realized I had no thrust bearing, or no, I'm sorry, no pilot bearing. And so ordered the pilot bearing, that has come in. So now this is where I'm at. I have removed the engine from the engine stand, got it set under, setting on an old Hoosier. And I am now about to put the new flywheel on and get it torqued down and I know I said I wanted to get a lot further along in this video than I have, but unfortunately, it's just 
That's how life goes. And so I have to take, you know, the wins with the wins and the losses with the losses and count my blessings at the same time. I'm to this point and I am extremely excited and very thankful to be at this point. And so I'm going to see if I can get this flywheel on and at least make sure that it fits on here right. And then once I get that done and everything torqued down, we'll probably call it a video. Um, good news, I did get the uh, uh, oil primed to make sure everything was lubricating correctly and it was lubricating right. And so I'll come back here in a second to make sure we got this flywheel on. If the flywheel goes on, no problems, we'll wrap it up and then I'll call this a success. A success. So I got the flywheel on, I got the clutch on, and I got the pressure plate on. And I was fortunate enough that Austin and Dad had these lineup tools already at the barn. So you can see everything is lined up. I have torqued everything down, so everything is completely torqued. So I am to the point to where I can install the transmission. So what I have decided, is I'm not gonna wait. I was gonna go in for the night, I was gonna call it a night, wrap up the video, and say I'm done. I just can't do it, guys. I, I can't do it. I've got to get this thing, I've gotta get it done. And the reason why, it is absolutely killing me that I'm procrastinating on this. I think just being completely transparent and honest with y'all, I'm a little bit nervous. And uh, I'll say that, you know, will, openly, I'm a little bit nervous to do it by myself because I've never done something like this. But if I mess up, you know, no biggie. I've only lost a ton of money, right? <laughs> Assuming get this transitional. So I've got to thank Wyatt. Wyatt was here. You guys saw that we uh, introduced his car. But Wyatt helped me use the uh, A-Volt pressure washer. We pressure washed this. This is a Saginaw 3-speed. And so we came over, pressure washed everything, got everything painted, uh, silver and black. And so I really appreciate Wyatt doing that. He learned, I learned that he's never pressure washed before. So that was interesting. But uh, here goes nothing. See if we can get them made it. I guess you gotta get this thing turned just right. Look at that. Look at that. All right, I figured it out. Lifting it up messed me up. <laughs> so now I let it down and when I let it down, the pins lined up and it pulled right on up in there. Heck yeah. Let's get them torqued. Well guys, here she is. The engine that can make or break my pure stock racing debut. But it is finally together sitting on the jack stands. I have a few small things that I have to get. I have to get a new uh, crankshaft bolt right here so that I can put all of my accessories on the front. But overall, what an incredible learning experience. I have learned so much. I cannot even remember everything I've learned in this video from Paul, from David Sendale, my gosh, Ryan Trezian, Vice Grip Garage, Steve Edens, Paul Gamble. I mean, just an, an amazing number of people. Just the support is incredible. 
I know I missed a lot of you guys. I apologize, but that's just the ones that come to head right off the or come to my mind right off the bat. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. This would not be possible without each and every one of you guys helping late, late, late night calls, tons of texts, and I know it's probably overwhelming, but man, has it been very much appreciated because without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. And so I appreciate that and I thank you. But I'm gonna wrap this video up here. You guys know what's coming next. Obviously, now that this thing is together, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to get this thing in the car so I can get it to Ronnie Roberts at Triple B to get the front nose put on when that front nose is done. And this thing is in the car. I'm not sure if we're gonna try to crank this thing up before we go to Ronnie's or after we get back from Ronnie's. You guys will have to wait and find out. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you guys like this kind of content. Make sure to hit that notification bell. It lets you guys know when we post. And again, thank you so much for all of the support. Don't forget we have our merch, hats, shirts. I believe there's a possibility that a has got us a website coming out soon for all of our merchandise. So that's something to look forward to. So very excited. Lots of cool things happening here. We've got Wyatt's build. We've got Brett's build. We've got all of the updates from uh, Travis and them, Philip. Uh, new stuff coming. I'm so really excited. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in the FFR shop. I appreciate all of you guys watching the video. Share this. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. Leave us a comment and tell us if you do or don't what I did wrong, what we did right. Because all that stuff we read, we take into consideration, and we apply. And sometimes we just toss it out the window, but that's because it's just goofy stuff. And it's funny, but I still love it. So. Thank you guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.